Hey guys, I don't know if you've ever heard of this novel, and let me know if you've heard of this novel, because I don't know if you've heard of this novel. This is called The Ill Earth War by Stephen R. Donaldson. And this is the chronicles, the story is, this is the book two of the chronicles of Thomas Covenant, the Unbeliever. Thomas Covenant, the Unbeliever, this is a really, really interesting story. And it's this is fantasy. It's a total fantasy, but it's not, yeah, it has like a fantasy kind of adventure where people get together for this mission against some kind of foe. And basically, um, so it does have that. It's got your adventure in there. It's got, but it's got something real interesting because the main character is Thomas Covenant. Thomas Covenant is a person in modern world. And the only thing is that he's a leper, like he has leprosy and um, in the world, like he's, he's really like, he hates his life. He has leprosy. He feels like, you know, he, does, he really doesn't, doesn't like his life. And he's always like, he's always down about it. And he's always down. He's always like, you know, he's always like in a bad mood. He, he hates everything. And, uh, you know, he just like, he's really, really someone that is really, really down all the time, hates everything. So what, he, what happens was, is some reason, for some reason, he all of a sudden finds himself in this other world. And he basically like walks into this other world. He gets transported like somehow to this other world. So I read this a while ago, so I don't, I don't know exactly how he did it, but it's cool because I don't want to do any spoilers. So. Yeah, so basically he gets transported into this other world. And in this world, he um, he finds that, like, he's able to cure his leprosy with um, something called hurt loam, which is there's this mud. And it's mud is, like, everywhere in this other world. And it's just mud. And what happens is when they put this mud on him, it cures him. Of his leprosy it just goes away like they put some mud on him and leprosy goes away you know like whereas like in his world in his world that he's from it's like you have to live with it but now all of a sudden he gets transported in this other world where they put this hurt loam on him a mud which makes the leprosy completely go away and now he's totally normal and like doesn't have it anymore and um what so what's interesting is after that they realize that he's been sent to them for a certain reason to um to take them on this journey and to defeat this um foe called the the, the lord foul and that's the third book the first book which is lord foul's bane the second book's ill earth war and the third is power that preserves and what happens is the reason that they need him to go against this Lord Fowl is basically Lord Fowl is creating, he's like destroying their land. Like they live in this prosperous, natural, really, really good land where this, this villain, uh, Lord Fowl is actually destroying the land. He create, he makes the, the earth bad. He makes like he, he destroys the forest so nothing can live in the forest anymore. He destroys the water so you can't drink out of the waters or swim in them. He just try, he's trying to destroy the whole land in, in where they live. And what's interesting about it, like he also finds that he has this white gold ring. And the, the white gold ring is his wedding band. And it's white gold. But in that world, there is no white gold you can't find it anywhere it doesn't exist you know and where in like where thomas covenant's from you know it, there there's there is white gold and you can buy it and get rings with it and stuff but because he has this white gold um he is uh, the white gold has this thing called wild magic and what happens is it creates this random magic which is really really powerful it's the most powerful magic is from this white gold and it creates this like random, very, very powerful magic. But the only thing is Thomas Covenant does not know how to use that ring, you know, how to make it to actually do what he wants it to do. Cause it just does whatever it wants. It does its own thing. It's magic, but you, he has no control over it. It does, 
if whatever whatever the white gold wants is what the white gold does, and it doesn't like he has no control or say of it. But the people in the land tell him that if he can control this white gold magic, they can go against Lord Fowl and defeat him because white gold can actually defeat this guy since white gold is so powerful. But in order to be able to do that, um, they have to. He has to be able to control it. So they're going on this quest against Lord Fowl, and um, they're taking him with with them. And he's trying to like learn how to use his white gold ring so that he can do magic, so he can like get rid of this Lord Fowl. Really, really interesting. But what I find like um, the most interesting is the metaphor of this whole story you know like it, the metaphor is huge like and, and this was okay this was in 1980s okay like and and, bef and in 1980s there was pollution and in 1980s there there was a lot of pollution um there were places where there was so much factory and so much smog that when you drove through it, like you couldn't even breathe, you'd have to turn, you know, you have to close your windows and that didn't even help that much in your car because it was such bad fumes. And, um, and what's interesting is that Lord Fowl is like all of these people that are destroying the world, destroying the planet, like by, you know, cutting down the forests or like polluting and, they don't care if they like if their factories like pollute everything and end up like spreading garbage everywhere and like in the long run it's just gonna like spread all of this sickness and it's gonna spread all of this pollution and it's like it's gonna spread this ill earth you know this like this bad earth everything is gonna the waters are going to be destroyed. The earth won't be able to grow anything. And um, exactly what Lord Fowl is doing in the story is actually, there's actually people doing that. And then on the other hand, there's these other people that are trying to preserve, you know, the planet and preserve nature and stuff. And that's like book three, the power that preserves. And they're, they're going against all that saying, no, you, they can't do that. They, they have to be stopped, you know, you can't, they, they can't pollute and whatever and then destroy the planet. And what's interesting is, and it doesn't really directly tell you that that's what's going on. It doesn't really directly tell you that that's what the story's about. You know, um, it, 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 what's interesting is because he, they, they never say anything about pollution because whenever like that guy is in his own, Thomas Covenant, the hero, when he was, when he's in the present, you know, he's just, you know, he's already, he's like a leper and he, he doesn't, he doesn't like any, he hates everything and he's always miserable. And then when he goes to this other planet, um, not planet, like other land, and it's a mist, it's like a mystical land. It's like another land, which is like, it's real. Like it's as real as like for it, it's real when he's there. It's like a real place that he actually goes to and he's actually called upon to fight this this huge this 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 enemy that they can't like take on by themselves they can't take on this enemy by themselves because they need him and his power of his white gold ring to go against it so yeah so basically i read the first novel i read this such a long time ago i you know i don't even remember the, like all the little stuff in here I'm just telling you what I remember remember from it. This is such a cool novel. This is one of the best novels, but I don't know if you can actually get this anymore. Like I don't I know it's not in the bookshops. I've looked and it's not there. And the bookstores they generally keep um they generally keep like only the newer novels. This is not a newer novel. I don't know if Stephen R. Donaldson has ever written anything else besides this series. Um but um and I'm not sure if you can get this on Kindle or Nook. Uh, but it's really worth a read if you guys like fantasy. It is a fantasy story. It, it, it does have this metaphor, which is like, and it's the same kind of metaphor where the never, where the, the never ending story had, which was, uh, the, 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 the kid was using these, um, was making friends with these mystical, like 
these mystical creatures to go and to go and 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 conquer this 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 force that was destroying their land called the nothing and that i think that I'm, i know that i'm pretty sure that story happened later i don't know it, it's i guess it's not like an original concept but um it, this is real real interesting uh, also the ring whole thing is not an original concept i'm pretty sure lord of the rings had the ring first but this ring does something totally different it's not like a magic ring it's a regular ring that's in the pro, you know in the regular like regular world is just a ring whereas in this place it has all kinds of like magic and it has all, all of these properties and so yeah and i also like so i have to read this is the second book and i think i read like halfway into it and i really should i'll probably start over and read the whole thing and um i don't know how i'm gonna find book three but i'll find it um and uh yeah this is a pretty cool illustration to basically here you go this is the illustration and this is them on their journey this is the world this is sort of like the world where where this is the the second world where, where his ring is magic and he's he's on with these other people and uh basically like that's them on their journey uh to conquer lord foul and there's a lot of stuff there's like these um there's there's these interesting there's something interesting in there called um the uh, there's these scrolls where you can only read the scroll when you're ready to read it and it's just like it's it's like that you can only read them one at a time you can't read through all of the scrolls for some reason it's just not allowed or something according to the scrolls or the keeper of the scrolls won't let you do that so you can only find out what you find out like you can only like open the scroll when you're ready to read it you know and then you can't read all of it it, it just it's really, really interesting. Um, I'm just gonna like, I'll read this to you in the back. Uh, yeah. Okay. For example, here it goes. After scant days in his real world, Thomas Covenant found himself again summoned to the land. There, 40 bitter years have passed while Lord Fowl, immortal enemy of the land, moved to fulfill his prophecy of doom. The Council of Lords found their spells useless now that Fowl, the despiser, held the Iller of Stone, ancient source of evil power. High Lord Elena turned in desperation to Covenant and the legendary white gold magic of his ring, and no one knew how to use the white gold, least of all Thomas Covenant. Uh, thus continues one of the most remarkable epic fantasies ever written so that's that's pretty much what's on the back of the of the thing and um it doesn't really it's not like a big there's no reveal there's no spoilers here um but pretty much you know <laughs> that's like the back of it uh and here that there's a little thing on the back says uh yeah, so this is pretty cool. And this is called the Thomas Covenant Saga, I guess. Um, all right, so guys, let me know if you've read this book. Um, let me know if what you think of the story, if you, uh, you know, whatever you think of the story or, you know, uh, and just, uh, yeah, cool. So, uh, and please like, if you like my videos, just uh, can you like and subscribe? That'd be cool. And I'll see you guys in another video. Take care.